finally on Queen's Park Rangers, question number eight. During the 2011-12 season, which striker scored in four successive Premiership matches at Loftus Road? Not surprisingly, he was the club's top scorer in a season in which Rangers narrowly avoided relegation. 2011-12, that season where we went up, uh, Aguero and all that sort of thing, yeah, when we narrowly avoided relegation. During 2011-12 season, which striker scored in four successive Premiership matches at Loftus Road? Not surprisingly, he was the club's top scorer in a season in which Rangers narrowly avoided relegation. I was there at Man City that day uh, when you know, that extraordinary Aguero goal and all of that sort of stuff. And to be honest, it, it, wouldn't, have, it wouldn't have happened if we hadn't have known that we were safe. I remember hugging everybody, just about everyone who'd ever grown up in Notting Hill that day. And um, Man City go on about that as the most extraordinary goal of all time. We let them have it. <laughs> it was that we didn't care. You, you can score, fine. I'd rather Man United don't win. While you're all swapping papers and working out those things, Don, Don Shanks, can I get you up here? And can I get Alan up as well? Wonderful. A big round of applause for him. That was a wonderful quiz, I must say. I think I knew two of the answers. Um, I have next to me now two fantastic footballers. Well... One fantastic footballer and Alan. No, <laughs> I don't mean that. Oh, please, don't. please. I was being cruel. Um, we've got one of our own, a boy from the White City and Stan's spar and best mate ever. And also one of the best footballers ever to have emerged from West London. Although he played for the, f for the wrong team. <laughs> one of the all-time greats. Alan, in your opinion, and you became very good friends with Stan, how good was he? Stan was uh, quite unique. There's a lot of things said about Stan. Uh, but he didn't really like football. <laughs> it's the most intriguing thing about Stan. Uh, this is best friend, Donald. Uh, and I, I tried to ask him... One day, um, I write books. I wanted them to write a book together. It would be the most fascinating book, fantastic book. But uh, the last time I played at Queen's Park Rangers was in, um, I think it was 1978, for Arsenal, and uh, he touched the ball twice. We murdered. I was playing for Arsenal, and... We absolutely tortured QPR and uh, he touched the ball twice and he went round Pat Jennings twice <laughs> and we got beat 2-1. <laughs> he, he, he only had to touch the ball a couple of times in the game and he would change the game and, uh, you know, that's genius. And uh, that's why I'm here, that's why he's my pal and uh, I could tell you a lot more stories than... You know, not as good as this, <laughs> but no, no, that's why we love Stan, don't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah, he was a, he was a, you know, he was a, he wanted to be a train robber. <laughs> <laughs> we were good friends with Tommy Wisby, the great train robber. I'm a good friend of his, uh, bless him, he died. If he could have been on that train, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he would have. Done everything to, you know, he, he wanted to be everywhere where there was gold duggery, you know. Uh, and, and that way he took it on the field with him. And that's what he was. He took, when he got on the football field, nothing bothered him because he was that good, you know. I think Don told me a story one day it, uh, when, you, when, you, when you won the five sides at Wembley, you know, it just, he was that good, you know. It just, uh, but it was all about gambling, you know. It wasn't about football; it was about gambling, and that's what happened to him in the end. It was, it was a gamble, and it was, and what we're here tonight for is it's so sad. We love him. I love him. I didn't really like him because he owes me so much money. <laughs> but, but I love him, and we love him. Yeah.
Oh, Alan, thank you very much. Don, you were his best mate, you were his spa, you were his... Well, I mean, when, when you were playing alongside him and then the, the end of the game's come and you're about to go out, what was that like? Well, it's a bit like the beginning of the game. You know, we're all in, in the dressing room getting sort of ready for the big event out there and it's like, uh, where's Stanley? And, um, you know, we used to call him Stanley, used to drive him mad, like, Stanley, where are you? And so all of a sudden, they get to about 20 to 3, 25 of Stan to walk in. He sort of come in, so casual, and just take the gear off. Here we go, let's go out. You have players doing press-ups, doing jobs, doing all this. Stan never done any of that. He just come in, gear off, gear on, let's go, out you go. Do something in the first five, ten minutes that we'd all dream of. Yeah, he could just do that. And after the game, he was exactly the same. In the shower, gone, let's go, dogs, off we go. He would be like, um, do you want to talk about the game? Are you kidding? <laughs> We're going to the dogs. Who's going to win the first? You know? <laughs> but that's what he was like. He was like, um, as Alan said, football was really not sort of in Stan's life. It was a, a means of making money. But he was just the best player that you could ever be around. And ever like, you know, people always ask me in the game, like, um, you know, you're under pressure and you're just looking for someone to pass it to. Maybe Jerry Francis, Givens, Masson. No, Stan would be there all the time. Just sli slide it into me. He'd buy the foul, we'd do this, he'd hold it up. And without a doubt, he was, he, he was just incredible to be playing with. But a lot of people would think, well, with his sort of flamboyant lifestyle and the cavalier way he has, that like... Oh, yeah, he's probably not going to turn up the training tomorrow. He looked like Bestie or something like this, doing that part. He was the best trainer you've ever seen in your life. He would have the hump like you would not believe. He weren't on the winning five-a-side team. You couldn't talk to him in the morning. He, he was terrible, yeah. He was a good loser, actually. <laughs> he, he lost a lot of losing, yeah. But, like, you go in there in the morning, and one thing you started to learn was, if training started at 10 o'clock, like, the rules were quite simple. Like Dave Sexton was a manager, Dave had his own style, some people liked him, some didn't. I particularly liked Dave, he signed me and one thing or another, but he was a sort of football purist in his own way. And you, in them days, you would have a situation, you'd come out and train, he'd all be in the tracksuit, you'd go out, there'd be a big circle, and he used to call it Piggy in the middle. So the last person who come out of the sort of like uh, training area was the one that was in the middle. And believe me, you did not want to be in the middle. The ball you would be chasing it for about 20 minutes in the warm-up. You'd have Bowlesy passing it to Francis, back to Bowlesy. To you would never get it. So you was never late in the mornings. But Bowlesy, training, he was the best trainer you ever see. He was the one who never spoke about football. It didn't even matter in his life. You know, I remember when Brian Clough rang him up and playing the European Cup final. He said, I'm busy right now or something. <laughs> you know, he's in the card school down in Labrook Grove, you know. <laughs> he said, you want to play John McGovern in front of me? Play him. And, you know, that's how he was. But he, he was an absolute sort of genius. But, like, my sort of career down here at the Bush, Luton, Brighton, I, I really enjoyed it. And there's only two people that I... When I was at Luton, Harry Asman was a manager. Alex Dock was before. He was a great QPR man, you know, back in the day, the League Cup win and stuff. I mean, a gentleman. When you watch that photo of us walking out of Wembley, you knew we were going to win because Alex Stock come out. He was like this. He was like a machine walking out there. He was like... Chess was out, yeah, we're going to win today, we're 2-0 down at half-time, obviously we've come back and won. And sort of like, you know, you get to that sort of point where you just sort of, anything stand done, you believed him. You thought, oh, you can go out and change the game, you can do this. He was a total, total genius, Stanley. Genius is a word that's too often used in this world, but it applies to Stan. Ladies and gentlemen, a hand for these two. Fantastic. You, and listen, um, I'd just like to say, Joanne Connolly, John Mahoney, everybody who's come along tonight. Now, obviously, like, we're an older group, maybe, because, you know, we're talking 40 years ago here. You know, like, um, you know, I was like a young sort of kid, born in the estate, a QPR man. We're going 40 years, so I'm so happy you've all come along. And I'd like to, Joanne, John Mahoney, everybody who spoke tonight, Alan, and yourselves, give yourselves a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you very much, Don. Thank you, Alan. Alan, shake my hand. You're very welcome. You must be getting paid. <laughs> I'd like to invite one more person to speak, and that's Michael Whale. Now, as a young... Michael, come up here. As a young Rangers fan...
I'm going to tell you a story here. I was a Rangers mad kid. One second, I was a Rangers mad kid growing up. You know, moved out of moved out of W12 up to, to the Watling Estate in Burnt Oak. And I remember my mum, when I was about 12, saying to me, Robert, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I said, I want to be a writer. And she, and she looked at me and she said, but Robert, they have people who do that. That's what she said. And I said, yeah, they have people like Michael Whale. I said, and if he can do it, I can do it. And he's here with us now, Michael. Take, take that, please. Yeah, yeah. Michael, we got we haven't got a lot of time because we, no, we need to no, get this, we, this we never have a lot of time. I know that on the BBC they always say, "Oh no, we've only got two and a half minutes, and we've got to discuss Prescott again." So, <laughs> so let's spend that time. Did you get to know Stanley? Indeed, yeah. I, I drank, I drank a lot with Stan. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, in the, a pub called the Crown and Scepter. We've all Shippers been there. <laughs> Thank you. It was a wonderful club, and uh, the uh, barman then, and the owner was called uh, Red Face Jim, and uh, Stan would often come in and say, Champagne, Lord Nay, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Champagne, thank you very much. But no, we had wonderful days together. Um, I also uh, was an appalling amateur player. I started <laughs> training with QPR, you'd never believe this, but. Um, I know all those years ago, 1960s, uh, we had the last amateur player ever to play at Wembley. He played in those that great match that we won. <laughs> and uh, it was wonderful because the awful Brian Glanville, <laughs> um, me being a journalist, you won't know who Brian Glanville is, but he wrote for the Sunday Times. And we went down in the lift and he went, oh, that wasn't much of a win. I said, We've just won the League Cup and we're third division and we beat, was it West, West Brom? West Bromwich Albion. It was West Brom and Rodney scored it, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we're talking about Stan tonight, I know, but I'm just telling you about the past of QPR, which I love. Um, How did you first fall in love with this club? Uh, Actually, I, was, uh, I went on the loft. Uh, no, not the loft. Uh, the, the bit behind the goal. That's the loft. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> unless it's and I insulted end. Gordon Banks. <laughs> and I'm a Leicester City supporter also. I must admit, I was brought in Le Leicester. So I do love Leicester. And even before they won, bloody hell, they won, you know, what they won. And... We don't even believe that in Leicester, the Foxes. So, and I'm also a member of the club that uh, saw Leicester and QPR both relegated together. So there we are. Well, we got promoted together. We should be where they are. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but we actually, I was, I was sitting, well, I wasn't sitting, I was standing behind Golden Banks and we insulted him so much. <laughs> and we went... <laughs> But we, did, we weren't nasty, we weren't insulting, but we just wished him to drop the ball. And it went in the net. And there we were in the final. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have memories of the 1975-76 season, Michael? Uh, oh, no, what, the other final? Oh, no, no, no. No, not the final. Uh, the season we won the league. Well, morally we won the league. Morally? <laughs> well, uh, uh. no. I, I have, you know, I actually, I like winning memories, actually. I don't like lose. you know, I don't what? like when we lose. Um, I'm, I'm still a great supporter of QPR. Don't hey, you are. Yes, thank you. Um, and I'm a great supporter of Stan. And I might tell you, I've drank many. P well, no. <laughs> that seems unlikely. <laughs> well, as you can see tonight, as I wobble about the stay, um, <laughs> Stan would be very proud of me. I didn't drink enough. Um, anyway. I'll tell you what, I did know him at Brentford as well, 
And he had a, a, a lovely house, you see. The owner of Brentford actually was very kind to Stan, and he loved him. And he gave him this little house alongside Griffin Park. And uh, we went down there one day with Thames or whatever television I was working for in those days, and we filmed him. And the cameraman sat on the table, and the camera, s the table smashed, and it was a, it was a glass table. And uh, so we said to Stan, "Well, um, can we clean that up?" He went, uh, "What's that?" Uh, we said, uh, "It's called a clean and a brush." Oh, and he didn't know, not a word about it. And, and, there, and that was Stan. I mean, he was, he was a beautiful man, but he didn't understand life. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> this is very politically incorrect, but we're in politically correct anyway, so there we are. Michael Whale, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> One more story, one more story. <laughs> oh. uh, uh, well, uh, yeah, I can tell you one more story. Um, actually, I did, uh, <laughs> I did play. Uh, I'll tell you the first thing. I trained for QPR the first moment when we ever had an amateur player called Keith Sanderson many, many years ago. And I've given the ashtray tonight that... I think it's worth millions of pounds, but there we are, I'll only go for a pound. Um, but I trained with that man, and Alex Stock said, could you come as you're just a writer? That's a mere sort of fact in life. And run round the stadium with him at nights, Keith Sonson. And he appeared in that Wembley final that we won. And he was the last amateur player ever to play at Wembley, and he was a QPR player. So there you are. Michael Whale. Thank you very, very much, sir. <laughs> you <laughs> are. <laughs> he, he obviously wants to get rid of me. <laughs> I'm not sure that was the last amateur who ever played for QPR. <laughs> I think it was. Oh, no, I think I was the last. No. <laughs> no, I... I mean, any of us who saw Gus Caesar, yeah. uh, no, I mean, no. was that man not an amateur? I did train. <laughs> I, I then trained with QPR. I must say, I did train. I, I did train properly with QPR, and it was amazing. You know, under Terry Venables, I trained with him, and he always remembers that. I got a goal in a five-a-side match, and he went, "Oh yeah, you went like that." I went, "Yes." <laughs> And there we are. Anyway, Michael Whale. Bowles, I'll tell you, it's an amazing person to me. Michael Whale. Well. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very, very much, sir. Shake my hand. A Rangers man, Michael Whale. <laughs> Myself and Russell Clark are going to be leaving in a moment because I've got to get up in the morning and present a radio show. But... Can I just say one last thing before I go? That this football club, gentlemen, ladies, this football club is a very, very special thing. I think we all know we're a bit wonky. We're a bit rubbish. We're very beautiful. And to most of us here tonight, and to... to I was going to say many people, about 12,000 people, we are the greatest thing we've ever seen. And Stanley Bowles is the greatest embodiment of what we love. So a big round of applause for Stanley, the king of Loftus Road. Ladies and gentlemen, Stanley, Stanley, born is the king of Loftus Road. Stanley, 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 Stanley. Stanley. Thank you, Robert. I'm not quite as drunk, 